Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Raid Versus, the series where we take exotic weapons through the ringer, putting them up against every single encounter of the Leviathan Raid and ranking their performance. Today we have a brand new exotic weapon with the Polaris Lance Exotic Scout Rifle. How will it perform? Well, let's get started. What is up guys, Rick Cock is here, and today, instead of sitting around clickbaiting the block spindle, we are going to be testing out the Polaris Lance in the Leviathan Raid. This weapon has just been made available this week with the Nascent Dawn 4 out of 5 quest step. If you want to get one your own, check out the video linked above. Now, the Polaris Lance is a really interesting weapon with perks that seem to indicate PvE usage and viability. Well, this this is the real test of that, so let's take a minute to look at the Polaris Lance's stats and perks. In terms of stats, this weapon belongs to the highest damage archetype for scout rifles. However, it does have incredibly high stability for this archetype. No other scout rifle even comes close. In terms of the other stats, they're pretty much average. Moving on to the perks, the exotic intrinsic perk is the perfect Fifth, precision hits return ammo to the magazine. Landing four precision hits loads a delayed solar explosive round for your next shot. Now, it has no more unique exotic perks, but the other important perk is Zen Moment. Causing damage with this weapon increases its stability. So overall, sounds like a pretty deadly package, but how is it when you actually use it? Well, let's start out here with the Castellum. Here we have a bunch of pretty basic enemies. We do have some yellow health enemies with reclaimers, but other than that, you're just slaying out. How is the Polaris Lance? Well, frankly, it can be very, very decent. The thing about this weapon is that it's actually incredibly forgiving. You don't have to get four precision shots in a row to get the delayed solar shot. You just have to get four shots, period. And that is really not that hard to do. So it's very common to kill a couple of legionaries and then have that solar explosive shot for the next guy you engage. And that solar explosive shot, well, it definitely does do more damage than usual. It doesn't seem to be quite double the damage, but you are getting a reasonable boost. Not only that, but the solar explosive round causes a large area of effect and this is going to help with groups of enemies, which there are a lot of in the Castellum, and it also provides damage over time. So not only is that round doing more damage than usual, damaging multiple enemies at the same time, but it also has a lingering damage effect to do even more damage than it otherwise would have. So it's certainly a bonus that's worth getting. Like it's definitely worth trying to go for precision shots, but frankly, if you're using a scout rifle, you're gonna be going for precision shots anyways. So this is basically a bonus that comes naturally. Not only that, but every single precision hit is going to go right back into the magazine. It doesn't even draw from the reserves. It is triple tap on steroids. It is a massive bonus. And your magazine, it's displayed as 14, it's not 14. You're going to get 20, 30 rounds every single time out of this gun because it is so easy to get precision shots with a very accurate scout rifle and then just increase your magazine capacity for doing so. Now that all sounds very good, and it is very good. The perks and the stats of this weapon are pretty decent, however there is one notable downside, and that notable downside is just its damage archetype. The high damaging category of scout rifles are not performing too well in Destiny 2 right now. Yes, they do the most damage, but the decrease to fire rate is really, really noticeable. And they don't do enough damage to warrant this decrease. Like, it's not like you're one-shotting everything with this archetype of scout rifle. You're frankly not. You're still gonna need around the same amount of shots that you would if you're using the Nameless Midnight, for example, or even sometimes the Purpose, but those guns shoot quite a bit faster, and that's something to definitely keep in mind. With that being said, a scout rifle that is better than most other scout rifles at DPS and
hand at dealing with groups of ads is going to be fantastic in the Castellum. It does somewhat struggle against the Reclaimers, but if you can get one at the right angle and start doing consistent headshots, you can take him down all by yourself, never having to reload, and you stunning him every single time you're doing that explosive shot. So that is actually quite good. Overall, I'm going to give the Polaris Lance a 7.5 out of 10 in the Castellum. There are definitely better options out there, but this is still a solid performing weapon. Moving on from there, we have quite the DPS check. Because, I mean, this weapon's perks sound like you can just shoot infinitely at a boss. And you can. So how much damage does this actually do against the war beasts within the pleasure gardens. Well, of course, at the very beginning, when you're shooting random war dogs and beast herders, it's fine. It actually doesn't do that much damage against the beast herders, but I digress, it is still just an energy weapon. The main test here that we all want to know is how much does it do against those big war beasts? Well, we got a 24 stack, and this was on purpose. If you get like a 70 stack, anything melts these war beasts, you're not really gaining much information from that. So a 24 stack, lined up my war beast, even did an empowering rift, and it's really not doing very much. Like, it is not doing anything near what other weapons can do. Even when it's going off, getting constant precision shots, you're proccing that explosive round like every single time. Uh, there is one massive benefit to using this weapon, however, and that's it, by just shooting the war beast, those explosive rounds kill the smaller war beasts that spawn. Like you'll see them die as they try to get to me because they're caught in those explosions. That is actually pretty sweet. But in terms of sheer damage output, this is just not good enough. Yes, it's better than your average scout rifle, but you really don't want to be using a scout rifle in this encounter. If you do want something that can hold its own in terms of a kinetic or energy weapon, there is even the Suros Regime was outperforming this weapon, the Sweet Business, the Cold Heart, stuff like that will be able to have a substantially higher damage output over a shorter period of time. So, in this encounter, the Polaris Lance gets a kind of sad 5 out of 10. It's average, nothing more, nothing less. So does that mean the Polaris Lance has trash DPS? Well, not necessarily. Definitely wait until the Callus encounter, but we first have to go through the Gauntlet encounter. How does the Lance perform here? Well, this is broken up into two different sections. The first section is just killing enemies, and here the lance is actually pretty decent. It's easy to get headshots with, it's actually nice to have a weapon that's very good at long range, like the, the lance is just incredible at long range, so you can shoot other sides, scions and legionaries with no problem. The, the only thing here is that the enemies do spawn out of doorways in groups, which is fantastic if you're activating that solar explosive round, but just a normal scout rifle, something like the Nameless Midnight with explosive rounds, period, like on every shot, might actually just be superior to that. You don't have to go to the trouble to activating an explosive round. Every round is an explosive round. And so that is somewhat of a downside to the Polaris Lance. And it's not doing anything incredibly amazing during this first section. Against the larger enemies that spawn, the Armored Centurions, it actually is the right element to take down their shield, which is nice, and you can pick away at them getting consistent headshots. Like, it's not a terrible weapon for taking those guys down, but again, it's not doing anything absolutely fantastic. It's kind of not meant for what it's doing here, which is killing a bunch of individual enemies spaced across. Like, it's just not really at home here. It's at home picking one single target and going to town. But again, similar to the Castellum, it is very much overperforming for a scout rifle and for an energy weapon in general. In the second section of this encounter, I mean, you're just shooting symbols. The lance is absolutely fine for that. Very accurate weapon. It does shoot a little bit slow, which some people don't like. Some people prefer something like an auto rifle where you can burst on those symbols, but really not too much emphasis there. So overall, the Polaris Lance gets a 7 out of 10. It is better than normal at killing those ads, but there are still better options out there. Moving on from there, we have the Royal Pools Encounter. How does the Lance perform here? Well, the first section is just going to be defending your plates, and the second section is going to be DPSing the Purple Lanterns. On the first section, the Lance is not terrible. 
with the bathers coming out you actually are able to put some pretty decent damage on them just with your lance but you need to be accurate like you need to be hitting their head and that can be somewhat problematic when they're literally jumping out of the pools at you so you can start to miss some headshots and then try to reacquire it can be again a little bit problematic the lance plus one grenade you can take these guys down no problem like it's definitely not underperforming here but it's also not overperforming here and you generally just want to use whatever power weapon you have on at the time to take those guys out but it actually is surprisingly awesome to have against the other adds in this arena because there are so many scions and legionaries shifting around poking out of cover and shooting you and going back into cover they can be very annoying to deal with and having a scout rifle that can one shot the scions and that can get explosive rounds to almost one shot the legionaries like it's actually great at picking off the rest of the adds in this encounter which is something to mention but moving on from there how is the lance against the DPS phase? Well, here, it's absolutely terrible. And the reason being is because you don't get precision shots against the lanterns. It just counts as a normal shot. And therefore, the lance doesn't get any benefit of any of its perks. So it's just a normal, slow-shooting scout rifle. And even though it's doing around 500 damage per shot, it's just doing it too slowly. Because you're getting no benefit whatsoever, you really don't have a reason to use the lands in the second half. So, it's you know, a slightly above average in the first half, but far below average in the second half. So therefore, let's split the difference. The Polaris Lance gets a 5 out of 10 in the Royal Pools. Absolutely average. All right, now moving on from there, we have the final raid encounter against Big Daddy Callus. How does the Lance perform here? Well, this encounter is broken up into the most sections. There are several different sections where you want a gun to be good. Against the first section, just in the throne room, it's actually pretty darn decent. It can one-shot the war beasts and one-shot the scions, and when you are doing consistent damage against some of the more powerful enemies, especially the Armored Centurions, those guys can go down pretty hard. Like, we had people stay in the throne room the whole time using the Lance, and they were saying, it's actually pretty decent. It's not doing anything phenomenal, like nothing world-breaking, but it's certainly not underperforming here. Now, the second section we're going to look at is the Void Room or Big Head. Here, you have to kill a bunch of Scions and shout out symbols. It's actually fantastic against killing the Scions. It's a one-shot kill against them, uh, so you can just pick one off, move to the next one, pick it off really quickly if you're accurate, so that's actually pretty sweet. But what about the Skulls? Now, this is actually a really interesting question. On the one hand, it's a slow-shooting scout rifle. It should be terrible, right? On the other hand, you are getting rounds back every single time you get a precision hit, and pretty much every hit on the skulls is a precision hit. So, here against the skulls, well, the perk actually does work, as you can see. When you get those precision hits, you do get rounds back, which is absolutely a benefit. But, it's not enough of a benefit to make this weapon worthwhile. It's just shooting way too slowly, and therefore, you know, I had to switch to an auto rifle. It just wasn't performing well enough in the skulls section of this encounter. But what can you do? A lot of weapons suffer against the skulls, and this is going to be better than any other scout rifle against them. Now, moving on from there, the last section of this encounter is DPSing Big Daddy Callus. How does it perform here? This is kind of the real test of a weapon in the Leviathan. Well, shockingly well. Like, honestly, shockingly well. Firstly, the thing you'll notice is that we stagger Callus all the time. It's pretty crazy how many times we get him to stagger, and I damage Callus a lot. This is kind of out of the ordinary, especially when all six of us are just using an energy weapon. Like, we're not using rockets, we're just using the Polaris Lance. The Polaris Lance really comes into its own during this phase. I mean, you can see from the background gameplay, I almost never have to reload. You're on the plate for the entire time and you never reload. Maybe you're gonna have to do one between plates or between the 
second and third plate, but other than that, reloading is really not an issue. And that means that you don't have as heavy as a reliance on Titan Rally Barricades. You can spread out your classes more. You can have a lot more Gunslinger Hunters if you're running the Polaris Lance because you just need like one Titan for uh, the Rally Barricade initially to get off all your rockets and then you're off to Polaris Lances. So that is actually a pretty massive benefit. And you'll see with all Polaris Lances and only 77 Skulls, due to the fact that we were trying to use Polaris Lance to kill the Skulls originally, we got him to half health. Half health with just energy weapons. I'm actually very impressed by that. Remember, with the Soros Regime, it was only about a third. So if we had better Skulls, around 100, and we used Heavies and Supers, and we weren't just testing the Lance, we could have easily taken Kallus down in a one phase with the help of the Polaris Lance. So, with all things considered, the Polaris Lance is surprisingly effective in the Kallus encounter. Not too good against the Skulls, and that is a consideration. Something like the Cold Heart is good in the Throne Room, and against the Skulls, and for DPS. Like, that is kind of the weapon to beat for being efficient and effective in all sections of this encounter. But the Polaris is still performing surprisingly well. So, overall, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 in the Callus Encounter. Now, the last score we have is the Versatility score. This is just how much can you use a weapon in every single encounter during the Leviathan Raid. How is this weapon as a raid loadout weapon that you're going to put on and not take off until the raid is done? Something like the Merciless is good in every single encounter. It's going to get something like a 10 out of 10. The Polaris, however, there was certainly some encounters, the Pleasure Gardens and the Royal Pools that it didn't perform very well in. And therefore, its rating isn't going to be that high in terms of versatility. Overall, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Above average, a weapon that you're not going to be massively disappointed by, but there are better options out there for like a stick to raid weapon. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.